I mean, if I'm going back many years now, I think if I take it back to when I was playing football at the time, which was for Norwich, um, one of the best goals I scored in my career was against Manchester United, win a winning goal. Um, fantastic memories and um, a dream come true. But what no one understood was what I was going through actually in the inside. So though you see a picture of me um, celebrating the best goal of my life, um, I was actually crying inside in the simple fact of, you know, you know, going through divorce at the time, missing my children, all the ones that personal things that we sort of suffer with. Um, and um, I didn't talk, I didn't, it, things got uh, progressed worse for me. I, I sort of spiralled out of control in respect of where my mind was at and I couldn't control what I was feeling emotionally. So I tried to ignore a lot um, and that's why I didn't speak. It was until I, until I attempted to take my own life um, the next day, that after after trying to do that, I um, went into training the next day, um, like nothing could happen. So the I, next day, correct? Yeah, and I um, didn't even say anything to no one. Just at the sheer uh, point of the judgment, I guess. Um, you know, the position I was in, although I have a bit of profile, um, I felt that you know I'm going to be uh, pointed at here a little bit, and I think that's one of the main reasons around why men as such are, are a little bit susceptible to come forward and have the confidence to come forward and say, you know what, I'm actually struggling. So that's why I do what I do today in the, in the respect of speaking out because I believe that it will go further uh, rather than keeping quiet. And I feel that I have that position to uh, make that happen. I mean, what, what was the turning point for you? How, how did you get that confidence, as you referred mm. to? I mean, how did you get that confidence to, to come out and to finally start talking about the many things that were bothering I you? I mean, that, that is a very good question. I think it comes really down to the fight in me. Um, you know, obviously went into boxing after my football career. And, and not only did I go into professional boxing for the reason of having it, um, loving it and um, it's in my, my family, it's in my DNA. But I was actually at a, another period in my life where I had to fight back, literally. So granted, I know that everyone can't jump into a, a professional boxing ring, but I felt it was my way of fighting back. I felt it was um, a way to show people, you know what, like, you can fight it. You can fight this. Um, and that's why, you know, doing things with the, you know, supporting the likes of the Samaritans today and, and getting behind, um, you know, these organisations and just reaching out to people that need the help. Because there's nothing wrong no. in talking at all. And, and the reality is when you do talk about your issues, you actually find out it's not as bad as what's going on in mm. your head. Is, is, that, is that right? Is that what you yeah. say, Jason? Well, it lifts the burden. Often people um, have so much going on and they just focus on this overwhelming feeling of us being so low. But as soon as they can start to share that worry, share that problem, it can give a huge sense of relief. That reaching out and speaking about it. What can people do to, to turn things around? Because um, with the figures that the Samaritans have released, it's revealing two in five men, this is aged between 20 and 59, just don't ask for help. They mm. just believe mm. that they can solve the problems themselves. Mm. That's a big figure. What can you do to turn that around? The, the likes of myself having a, a profile, what you find is in society at the moment, which is kind of sad in, in the respect of if a celebrity, like I know uh, a former footballer and TV reality stars just lost his life through, through a, a sad tragedy um, of taking his life. Um, with that, a lot of people take attention to that. Um, but again, besides that, there's so many people, there's so many different industries, whether it's construction, law firms or high pressure jobs that maybe aren't um, in the public eye like myself um, and don't have the position to, you know, if I have anyone to speak to. So I feel like with someone like myself and, and many other people, many people with high profiles keep uh, pushing positivity and keep speaking because I can tell you this now, um, over a period of time, it will get out there. And it, we have to stop this stigma and stop. Um, it's all about prevention now. It's all about trying to be positive and look into the right areas and looking into the, the, the people with influential backgrounds to hopefully make a change. And, and whether that's just by speaking, then hopefully we can do that. And Jason, you work, you work a lot in, in training people, helping mm -hmm. them identify mm -hmm. somebody who potentially might be in need, who might need help. Mm -hmm. What are the sort of things people people should look out for? Well, there's a couple of things. First of all, um, 
if they're just not themselves, you're thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about that person, maybe distant or withdrawn. Um, they may be uh, just not doing the normal things that they like to do, uh, like going out and enjoying themselves and doing that. I, what I'd like to pick up on is, is Leon, who was talking about real people and real stories. If we can share those real people, those real stories, then that will help break down that stigma. Uh, Samaritans has a number of stories on its web page, uh, samaritans.org, of similar people. You don't need to be a celebrity, actually it affects everybody, doesn't it? And it's knowing that it can happen to anyone. And then that will release people, I hope, to start to make that first step of recovery, which is asking for help and, and, and stepping out to support those people. Just those people understanding that they have value, you know, everyone's special in their own right and, um, you know, you have that value, so like, please hold on and, and please ask for help if you're struggling. Mm -hmm. That's the simple, you know, reply into trying to get help.